All right, we'll go ahead and get started, everybody. And if uh, John has to duck out to go on elevator duty, we'll just bid him adieu briefly. Uh, thank you for coming out. Um, Houston App Aficionados, this was an idea that um, Kelsey and I, uh, Kelsey's in the back, and I'll be back down here in a second. Uh, we were kind of bantering about, like, how do we get people um, into the community um, or from the community out in a, in a common setting and talk and just geek out, right, and talk about the apps they're using. Uh, and so we wanted to structure it a little bit. Um, and have a different theme each month. So obviously this month it's photography, uh, and we're honored to have two of the leading minds, Rhonda and Imelda from the local community, about how they're using apps in their daily uh, workflow. So I'll give a quick plug to some of the social media efforts that we've got going on. Uh, I wish I had been able to pimp out the event a little more over the weekend, uh, but I've got newborn twin daughters, and they monopolize my time. So uh, hopefully for next month we'll get uh, a little more marketing attention uh, early on. But we... Uh, we do have a Twitter account set up at App Aficionados. Uh, I've got it on the whiteboards as well. If you guys aren't following it, I encourage you to. Uh, if you want to tweet anything that you see uh, Imelda and Rhonda talking about tonight that you think is cool, uh, please use the ham hashtag, ham. It's kosher, though, I promise. Uh, we've got LinkedIn and Lanyard events posted on the um, App Aficionados Twitter feed, so if you want to kind of check in there and show that you were out tonight, I encourage you to do so. Uh, and most of the activity is happening on Facebook, though. So I think we have about 100 members now in the uh, App Aficionados Meetup group. So um, kind of cool. So hopefully this will continue to flourish. Um, so I alluded to this why we wanted to um, start this Meetup group. But uh, I, was, I love alliteration. So I was thinking last night as I was crafting this deck, OK, uh, how will I make this illiterate? Uh, so I went with P. Uh, and the real reason I started this with Kelsey is because we're both passionate about mobile. Right, uh, and a lot of people are in Houston, uh, and you want to go meet those like-minded individuals, the people. Uh, and obviously, we have experts here who are professional, like Amelda and Rhonda. And uh, finally, we want people to become more proficient with the apps they're using. So um, I use apps like 10 to 12 hours a day, and I'm not exaggerating. So um, I, I want to be able to foster a community where we're sh swapping app ideas and be able to find the best tools that are out there. So, uh, introductions. My name's Justin, Justin Western. Uh, many of you know me. Uh, I have been here in Houston for about five years now. Uh, I love mobile. I've been a geek since birth, uh, ever since playing the Nintendo and uh, playing with Palm Pilots back in the 90s all the way through today. Uh, so, I work here at Chai One. Um, prior to that, I was in the Air Force for a little while, and uh, yeah, I'm an app geek. So, let's we'll go around the room. Um, my name is Mama Bettinger, and I'm a Mac geek as well. I've been using Mac since I was five, six years old and love all things Apple and you know, love photography and so I just really well just enjoy learning and sharing with others. I'm Joey Garcia. Uh, it took me forever to <clears throat> get into Macs and uh, to finally decide to purchase an iPhone. Once I did, I took advantage of it. I really love the, uh, the camera on it and I enjoy a number of uh, photo apps, learning how to use them, and challenging, my, challenging myself to uh, to learn new things with the photo apps. I'm Rebecca Cornwell. I uh, have used apples for as long as I can remember, but I don't know anything techie. I come at um, mobile photography from a clearly artistic point of view. I'm a former painter who has three children and no time to paint, so I've taken it up on the iPhone. So cool. um, that's what I do, mostly crazy edits. I'm Kurt Reestrom. Uh, I'm a designer here in Taiwan, and uh, I like anything that has to do with creativity or uh, arts and stuff. I also can use uh, apps to do that. And I'll give a plug for Kirk. He was the one who designed our logo uh, that we've been using on some of the social media outlets. So uh, hats off to him. My name is Henry, and I too work here. I am a uh, PM, and um, basically videography, photography, outside of the work stuff, uh, photography and videography. I'm uh, Ryan. I work for Taiwan. Um, they pay me to clean the bathrooms. And, uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, Justin is actually not my boss, but if he was, I think he'd be a fantastic boss, and I'd love to work for him. <laughs> um, and 
It's like I paid these guys to be here or something. It's, <laughs> it's embarrassing, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. I, I've been a Mac user since uh, uh, since we're equating the two. I've been a Mac user since um, 2004 when I took my PowerBook on my deployment to Baghdad with me and was actually learning to code in my tent on Xcode. And so when the iPhone SDK came out, I was really excited about that. And which I brought me here when I had a lot of on. So I love um, the work we do here with apps and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to hear about the stuff that we're doing. I'm John Frenet. Uh, I also work here. Um, and uh, I've, I've been Mac fan for a long time. Um, uh, <coughs> like mobile devices, appreciate all the crazy, amazing stuff you can do with them. And appreciate them as a, as a secondary part of the community, but I think it's going to be a central part soon. So. Uh, my name is Jim. Uh, I'm from Norway. I'm currently interning here at Taiwan. Also an exchange student at West University, and I am studying computer science back in Norway. Uh, I took up photo photography two years ago, and I'm well. I enjoy taking pictures while I travel as well, and uh, well, as everybody else, I'm more and more using it for my telephone to take photos. So that's about it. I'm Rhonda Tipton. I'm pretty much ex developer turned photographer or whatever and well I mean you know I uh, do a lot of I try to get I do a lot of fine art stuff I try to get my stuff into galleries and, and things like that I've been successful a couple of times <laughs> and I love my phone I'm not a, a strangely enough I'm probably the only person here that does not use a Mac I would like to it's just I'm PC and having to buy all those so all the software again for the Mac is just too much money that's the only <laughs> drawback. <laughs> I wouldn't go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I'm Teresa Quintanilla. Um, I have a website called Creative Houston. And how long have you been at Raleigh's? A couple of years? No, uh, just a couple of months, actually. Oh, okay. uh, there was another foreign, foreign student, another grad student from out of the country. I think he was Scandinavian who did some beautiful pictures at Rice, and I ended up featuring them on uh, the Creative Houston website. The website is kind of dormant. Um, I took a job at a company here in, in the building called Mosquito Zone, which is a business to business company that provides malaria control to the oil companies when they're working in the tropics. Interesting. And that job keeps me busy enough to kind of mush out all the other projects that I used to do when I was an entrepreneur. Which, Maybe the reason my business never went anywhere because I was busy, too busy running around doing other projects. But um, I have used Apple and on and off for years. Mosquito Zone, the company that I went to work for, is 100% Macintosh. Interesting. Um, I have managed to accumulate a lot of computers in my life and a lot of different operating systems. So um, I'm not particularly loyal to one, but I am very happy with my um, iPhone and with Camera Plus. And I'm still trying to figure out what the deal is with Instagram. I mean, I have it. <laughs> well, I think they're going to uh, to talk a little bit about that tonight. I, just wanted, I, thought, I thought maybe that would mystery would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so since this is our first meetup, um, I was thinking last night exactly um, kind of what we... Uh, should talk about each time. So this is a trial balloon. If this uh, comes off as kind of lame, we won't do it next month. Um, but these are three apps that I use uh, that have recently been refreshed in May. I use them literally every day, um, um, just all the time. So I wanted to demo just a couple of them. Um, and it's kind of like opening up the kimono a little bit because Pair, I just, Pair is a, um, think Facebook, but with two people. Okay, uh, so you're able to communicate with your loved ones. That's how they uh, pitch it to people. I believe it's on a Silicon Valley. Um, and let me airplay this right quick. Come up on the screen. All right. Let's move this up. 
So I mentioned earlier that my wife and I just had twin daughters, um, and she's still on maternity leave right now, so she's at home with the kids, and uh, she's been sending me photos of them every day, uh, also telling me to pick up milk on the way home, or formula. So uh, the idea is, and you can see some of the messages, it's kind of like your SMS app uh, on your iPhone, that's where you can see different things in line, um, and what's kind of cool and geeky about this is there are a couple of other features you can do as well. So. Uh, I can sketch out little happy faces here uh, and send that to my wife and so she'll get that at home and realize that I'm happy and maybe things are going well here. She told me to enjoy my meetup earlier um, and literally if I scroll all the way up through here, I've been using it for probably about two months now um, and over here, similar to the uh, the Facebook layout, the Facebook app layout, it's kind of got the sliding thing, kind of like path as well. Uh, and If I go to the moments section here, uh, you can see all the different doodles and uh, whatnot that she's been sending me over the past um, two months or so. Um, I was happy that I got a delivery, so she sent me my delivery notice at home. Um, so it's, you know, there are a thousand different ways you can communicate. This one seems a little more personal, uh, and so I find myself using it a lot more. Um, so this is one of the really cool apps that um, I found in May, and I'm using it, like I said, every single day. Uh, the second one is Remember the Milk, uh, and I probably should have looked at my task list to make sure there's nothing uh, incriminating here before uh, I show it to you guys, but uh, if you have, are familiar with Remember the Milk, um, you probably use it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a task management app. Uh, these guys are based out of Australia. I first found out about them probably back in 2005 or 6 um, when I was in the Air Force. I needed a way to just plan my work day. Um, they were the most Google company to do a to-do list that wasn't owned by Google. And I thought for sure they were going to be acquired by Google for the longest time. They remained independent, uh, and I'm kind of glad that they have. Uh, so you can put a little sidebar in your Google Calendar. Uh, you can do it within Gmail. Like instead of your chat widget, you can swap out Remember the Milk. Uh, and I run my day through this app. Um, it allows you to uh, kind of hold down on this and say complete. Uh, I didn't complete that one, so I'm going to go off of there. Uh, and it's, I, I tell people I live an interruption-driven lifestyle right now, like I've got a lot of things going on, so the push notifications from this app really keep me on task. So I try, I have it set up for 30 minutes before a task is due, and that way my hip starts vibrating and I know, okay, I need to go um, you know, pick up bread on the way home or whatever it is. So um, this fits into my, my lifestyle really well. Uh, the other one... I'll show off of my iPad. Can I mention one tiny thing about it? Absolutely, yeah. Interrupt me at any I've time. I've used that app for uh, the website for a number of years, and then the app came out afterwards. Right. And in order for you to um, use the app and have it sync with your content on the web, it's a twenty-five dollar a year charge. Correct. You have it's to use free. the pro subscription. Mm -hmm. It is not free. But it is. It is a fantastic tool. Yeah, it's one of the um, up and reflection crash. This is why you pre-flight the vis aids at all times. So uh, let's kill that and start it back up, hoping it'll work. They definitely are. Um, so running off the iPad here, uh, the other is SoundCloud that I wanted to point out. These guys are based out of Berlin. Um, my, my musical interests skew a little off the beaten path. Uh, I'm an electronica guy and uh, also like a lot of jazz. Um, SoundCloud, they addressed a market that was not getting addressed by anybody else. Um, maybe MixCloud, but uh, the idea behind SoundCloud is similar to Twitter. You follow different DJs or different artists. Um, on the website, and then you can play mixes they upload that are typically somewhere between an hour to two hours, uh, and then you can either download them from the website to put on your iPod if you don't want to stream everything, or using this app, uh, you can pull up one. For instance, uh, let's pull up this Derek May live in London, and it will start playing somewhere, presumably. was playing very low out of my laptop because we're airplane mirroring to it. Um, but the reason I point this one out, I, I sit on my back porch sometimes on the weekends and I don't want to have to bring out my iPod with headphones on it. 
Uh, so I just set this up on my iPad and I can browse through just thousands worth of hours of audio. So I don't have to have it loaded there locally. Uh, and it really fits into my music launcher and it's refreshed constantly. These DJs upload their new mixes literally every other day. Uh, you get an influx on the weekends, obviously, because these guys make a living playing clubs on the weekends. Um, but if you're interested in electronic music, these guys are really uh, kind of trailblazers right now. So, uh, those are the three apps that I wanted to highlight that I'm getting a lot of use out of right now. And let me kill this. Go back here. And at this point, I would be honored to turn the floor over to Imelda and Rhonda. Okay. Ladies? I guess I go first because, like I said, mine probably won't. Because y'all won't talk about me. Um, basically, I use a lot of apps for different things. The, but I have three apps that I go to just about all the time. Um, one, of course, is Camera Plus. It's just, um, it's got tons of filters. Well, I guess a few. I mean, um, a lot. Do you want to pull it up up yeah, there? Did you want to put it up on the screen? Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking. Oh. I'm getting there. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. So. I have one here. At the soccer game the other night, thought it looked cool with the clouds and everything, so I took this, even though I cut her feet off. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, there's already got clarity on it. I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, I don't know, initial settings here. You can crop it any way you want. If I wanted to crop it for Instagram. And then all the effects. I mean, there's depth of field, there's all this retro color, analog effects. So analog costs extra, I think. I think I had to pay. I think it's a minute. Yeah, yeah. It's well. like, yeah. That, you had to buy the app and then buy the, the analog. But, um, Do you remember the cost? I want to say it was 99 cents and then another 99. Mm -hmm. Might have been $1.99, but. I think it was a special one. I think I got it for a low price, but they said that it was going to go up. Maybe that's a couple more. I think I paid a buck ninety nine when I downloaded okay. it. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, props. Let's see if you can adjust it. I mean, you have, have to flip it. Quarters, I don't usually use quarters a lot. I mean, but there's a whole lot of different, several different kinds. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I usually do my initial edit and crop in Camera Plus, and then if I want to do something else, I uh, go to other things. Um, my other app that I use constantly is Snapseed. Love Snapseed. Love the grunge filter. <laughs> um, dramatic filter tends to give me a lot of hailing and hailing depending on the picture. So I, but, let's see. Okay, I already have one, one up here. Um, with the grunge filter, I mean, there's just like all kinds of settings, and I like, I actually like doing like that. <laughs> You can actually see it changing. That's cool. I don't think the burn filter will work that well. Um, we've got vintage, several styles of vintage settings. Yeah, the grunge, that grunge actually, it kind of combines the, uh, the vintage and drama. some of the drama. Yeah. And it just it has a bunch of different styles that affect the saturation, the brightness, but it also adds a texture and gives you more of like the, the depth of feel. So Yeah, I love 
I use that quite a bit, and it's usually, uh, I think the grass filter works out really, really well on, like, country scenes, or yeah. ranches. And like, my country. favorite is, like, style 1482, like, it's real specific. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> I just like what he gives you. So. But, I mean, you've got the tilt shift, frames, center focus, which I used center focus the other day. Um, I don't use it very often, but I had a picture with a soccer ball, and I, and I just focused in on the soccer ball. Um, yeah, it just blurs. It, it gives a, like a milky blur to the background. Uh, I'll frame that up in a second. Um, and I like the fact that you have your sharpening structure settings now. Yeah, that was just recently. Yeah, it's a new um, feature. Um, straightening, I've used that a few times because I'm like, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the straightening feature is also really nice. Yeah, and it's easy to use. <laughs> the selective adjust, I don't think I've ever seen any other app that does that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not, not that specific. Yeah, and that one, it's real, it's real manual. You can yeah. actually go into, like, let's say that the white part of that building right there, if you wanted to zoom into that specific part. Mm -hmm. um, add a point, just hit the plus sign, you add a point. Okay. So I don't think I've used it. Yeah, you can add it and then you can fine tune just that one oh. section. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't think it's, I've ever used that. You, 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 you can, can make it bigger or smaller yeah. too. Yeah. The radius. Oh, I'm so familiar. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> very, very... This is a, it's a really effective app. It, it, it lets you do a, a whole lot um, as far as like the different filters, mm -hmm. uh, HDR effect, depth of field. It seems like it could be a little tricky. Right it's very beginning. technical, so yeah. if you don't have a photography background, the verbiage and the mm -hmm. technical aspects can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> this is the I think it, a lot of the things, it, it, it gives you so many different options that you're kind of like, oh, which, well, they what, call which things, way do you want to go? They right. call things very technical names, but if you, like, and I don't know what those things are, but when I get in there and do it, I know exactly what it's doing, but the way they talk yeah, is very sense. elevated. So that's my other... Oh, and another cool thing about this app is they just had a recent update, and uh, they allow you to post directly to Instagram now. Oh, a yeah. lot of the apps are moving towards that, that direction. So. Yes, all different. Huh. Flickr, Facebook, Twitter. I like that we control what Camera Plus offers for posting. I'd be interested to see this in the But I like the control that you have over the tuning, on the over the fine tuning, mm -hmm. as well as the filter, grunge filter. And the, sometimes they use the vintage. Mm -hmm. but, There's a lot of variety to mm -hmm. use it. It's hard to decide which way to go. Okay. Um, yeah, Camera Plus. And you say, well, I'll share, I guess. You can go with the front. Looks like. If you click on the picture. social, this is one that, um, that you probably want to hear about. Yeah, I, I don't post from here very often. Um, but um, what I really like is, is it's got a good feature for sharing the Flickr. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, personally, I really like Camera Plus. It's kind of a foundation to any of your, your mobile photography apps. Mm -hmm. Um, it's one of the earliest, or the earlier ones I found out about, and it's to me it seems as though like a lot of the, the other apps that started coming out uh, started to mirror what they were doing because the way you can maneuver through this app using the different filters right. and um, adjusting the scenery, it's real easy. And that, it's a app, lot. that app is valuable, if not for anything else, but for clarity. It's clarity, the only yeah. clarity. app where you can get decent they were, they were the first ones to have it, and then other apps started jumping on board, like PhotoForge 2. Um, there was another one that started doing it. But all of the recent uh, mobile photography apps, their updates have included a clarity button. I mean, even it's all Instagram because of Camera Plus. Plus. Yes, can't yeah, but there's a mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the other thing I like, and it's mostly for the filters, is pick effects. I don't know why they just have like a ton of, they've got a ton of different kinds of filters. Or, under classics, there's like oh, 10 of them there, so more than that. Even. That's good. Let's 
several different, I mean, it's just the sheer number of filters, I can usually find something that works well. My favorite thing to go to is the scratches <laughs> to add the textures. Yeah, that's cool. I've been going there a lot, and that's fairly new. That was in the, like, the last update, they added scratches. I should use scratch cam. Uh, another thing, and I have and that picture that I that you took a picture of, Justin. Uh huh. Um, oh, I'm yes. You want me to pull it up? Well, in a second. I was just going to show it. Let me go back here. Yeah. find it. There you go. Took the original one from that, and I thought I wanted to make it look. I don't know, because this is a flower in my friend's backyard, and I liked how the light was coming through the, the actual petals. Because I'm not a big, I'm not a huge flower person, but I thought that was kind of cool, especially with the sunflowers up in the background. Um, so I went to light, and I played around with these polka. What's that? Crap, it. But I liked. I think that's the one I ended up using because of the. So I thought. The book would look pretty cool. <laughs> anyway. One, one other thing, and I don't know if, if the stylized button right there, uh -huh. that also affects the image itself. Like you can start out with black and white, sepia, dark, vintage, and there's a so couple of more down there, yeah. like blue, blue stripe, blue red stripe. stripe. And you can just start with the base image like that, and then on top of that, add your filter, and it gives you like a whole different dynamic. Yeah. Start with I played with that some. I haven't done a whole lot with it. So, and like I said, there's the light, and then there's kind of, if you want to get really kind of funky, you can, I don't think it'll look good with this one, but there's a space. And that doesn't look right. Use one of the space filters. And I kind of made it look <laughs> uh, stars and stuff. Yeah. I don't like that one much. That one looks pretty interesting. So, if you want to get really weird. <laughs> and they're grunge. Yeah, they're grunge. Well, of course, grunge is not going to look right on this, but um, there's several different ones. I usually go for the black or the blue, but I like snap seeds grunge. So that's it as far as my three top things. Um, there's other apps like Pro HDR. I think I don't use that near as much. I, I, I play around with it, but um, <laughs> there's nothing really that I don't have anything to take a picture of in here. But you basically have to just hold it still, put it, and make sure you hold it still for two exposures. Yeah. You can do it manually. You could actually combine two and it would be somewhat of the same effect. Right. Um, Lindy Lindy's kind of cool. The only problem with that that I don't like is that it takes the resolution of your image down to 600 by 600. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to use that, just make sure. Are you, are you uh, able to adjust it? I, if there is a way, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. I'm not familiar with it. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a good one. There's several, you know, it's just a few filters on the side that you can use. I'm going to say, hmm, it's a lot better. Anyway, that, like I said, the bad thing is it just takes your resolution down. So if you're going to use it, just make sure you're, all you're doing is posted to the web <laughs> and not <laughs> planning for anything else. 100 cameras, that's just another filter program. There's not really any editing in that one. Just get a hundred different filters to use. Yeah. You can just choose. Kind of weird names. Mm -hmm. 
Just a whole bunch of different effects. A hundred. <laughs> Which I won't go through them all. Those are <laughs> odd names for filters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just kind of, they're very moody, very... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very moody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, collage. Uh, collage software, the, the apps, um, I use Diptych a lot and Photoshake. Photoshake, you have less, I think you have less control. Um, I like Diptych because, you know. You have a lot more than that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah, let you one. let let you have like more curved edges. Oh, okay. On your prints. Yeah, it's kind of good. I have to check that out. But I like it because you've got tons. Have you used InFrame? Mm -hmm. That one is so crazy. You can make your own. It's so crazy. Really? You should look it up. Yeah. It's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sample of Diptych. Oh, I said, what did I just do? Um, yeah, we went, my friend and I had been to Galveston quite a bit, and we noticed all these wallflowers in the, the main cemetery there on Broadway, down mm -hmm. towards the seawall. And finally, yeah. one day, we finally stopped. And so, instead of posting three separate pictures, I thought it would be kind of cool to just tell the story. Yeah. Um, no, we're going to be sharing. Um, well, <laughs> what are you sharing? Um, um, camera bag is another one that's kind of the only main thing I like about it is the fish eye. <laughs> the little fish eye. I think I posted one earlier playing around with a little fish eye <laughs> on it. Let me can. Camera, yeah, camera bag has quite a few. Um, I used camera bag a lot right after I got my uh, iPhone back in 2008 because yeah. there were a lot of apps like right. that back then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Color splash. I like color splash. <laughs> if you want to do, like, this is the original picture. And then that's my color splash, even though you can tell where I screwed up on the edges. <laughs> but, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. And if you want to do selective color, it's kind of cool. That's just a picture from the park. Anyway, uh, I'll say anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Time lapse is kind of cool. If you, I don't have an example of it, but it's a. Uh, You can set, if you set your iPhone still or whatever, you can uh, snap a photo every 15 seconds or however long you want. It gives you full control on time. And it just creates, if you sit there, it'll it'll just, it'll create a little time lapse. Does it take a picture on top of that existing picture? Yeah, and then it does like a quick time, time lapse thing. Oh, for, okay, that's cool. Okay. There's yeah. one I use called um, Shutter Magic. Huh. Similar to it, but it puts a picture on one night. It's all you have to take pictures of water, um, and you can see the moon out of the water. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. There's a fountain in the office. <laughs> I like to sit, I sat at Starbucks one time and sat there and snap pictures for like 10 minutes or whatever, 15 seconds, just to see. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I don't want the store. Okay. That's quite a bit of what it's I. And you're going to do percolator. Word photo is another one that's kind of interesting. I don't know if I have an example of it. I don't have it installed anymore, I don't think. Yeah, I, think I, found I don't use it very it. often. I, thought I, was, I think maybe use it twice. I just couldn't find it. What yeah, doing. well, I, I don't either. I just. Yeah. It's, but the percolator is kind of thick, but we don't like that. Okay. That's me. I'll get off. Did you want to talk about this image that 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It has a visual. <laughs> a visual. And you'll, you'll see the first picture that I did. I just put on there the originals on the, the left, I guess. And then I just put a few different edits from different software. Um, like I said, I just did the top one pretty much. Well, I did the pick effects of it. Um, but, like I said, let me, let me, like I said, I just don't like it because it takes down the, the resolution, mm -hmm. so, yeah. But, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, if anybody wants to see it, it's here. Um, right, let me go back here. So, um, I'm sure everyone's heard of Instagram. It's great for sharing. I met Rebecca through Instagram, so that's fantastic. Um, Hold on one second. I think I have to relaunch it. Someone okay. only do two at once. It gets a little I had to shut wacky. Down. Okay. Let me call mine back up. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. First, I'll just open it up real quick. Um, I've been using digital, we're doing digital talk for a number of years, and I used um, Flickr for years, but um, there was a really big community back, you know, six years ago when I started using it, and over the past couple of years, the community's just not there. And I really enjoyed Instagram for that particular community. Um, being able to meet people all around the world, I mean, even locally, we've had meetups in Houston, a number of meetups here in Houston, and um, just, it, it helps bring people together, helps you learn about other, other, um, apps and just different photo styles and so I've really been enjoying that so one of the the couple main things uh, uh, is Instagram it didn't initially start off with uh, using hashtags but now that it supports hashtags um, there's different kind of groups and different kind of like for example um, Rebecca has a, a Sunday blues edit where every Sunday she calls and asks people to actually um, share images that focus on blues. I have a fascinating story coming out on just in a couple of weeks oh, well, about the edit. And so you'll see that. I mean, <laughs> how long have you, have you been using it? Like, have you been like, um, I'm weeks, on eight about eight weeks, uh, 15 weeks, I think. It's a long, okay, it didn't seem like that long to me. But, um, I mean, but just all kinds of just beautiful blue photos just on Sunday. So that, that helps bring a community of people together, and you can see what other people are doing and, and kind of play off of somebody else. And, you know, just a lot of neat different styles you can see. And a lot of people have actually met each other in person. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. people have found each other. They lived in the same place yeah. and through the tag, which is yeah, pretty yeah. amazing. So beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, another mm -hmm. thing, as far as as far as community um, with Instagram is um, Hipster Roll. Um, there, it's a user ID, and every week that uses the application on Instagram to suggest like Instagram lets you use different um, films and it lets you use different. Um, lenses, it's cinematic. It's cinematic, sorry. It's and so it, it suggests, it's not a competition or anything, but just a suggestion as far as what to use per week. So every Friday it puts it, it puts out, oops, oops, So this one is basically for this week. They post it on Friday every week. There's a different hashtag, so you can find. Um, they'll tell you which which filter and which lens to use, and they get tagged. When you you can now use Instagram to post directly to Instagram, so it'll tag the filter and the lens for you. And you can just add the hipster all week, and you're you're asked to only post three, but you can see that this is that all the images are kind of similar. It lets see you just my face every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you are. Um, so it's just it gives you different ideas of how to how to you know, just get to be able to more creative. You know, sometimes you kind of get to okay, what am I going to do next? How am I going to do something different? And it just gives you a really nice suggestion as far as what you could use to. to and combos that you like combos that I've never thought of, yeah, exactly. or like I'll get stuck on a combo and not even think about exactly it. Exactly to try a different. And what the, the great thing about hypsomatic is. You, you take a picture, but you don't know really, I mean, you can take a picture before and you can edit it afterwards and other like Camera Plus, but it, this is the other, it goes the other way around, where you really don't know what effect you're going to get. And 
it just gives you a lot of hipster. Um, hipster um, yeah, what Hipstamatic does is it kind of gives you an analog feel to your photos. It kind of takes you back to you know the old school. You combine <laughs> film and lens. And a, lens. And a and, kind of um, flash if you want to. And flash if you want to. So and <laughs> what you yeah, what you're saying is you have no control over how the film or how the print develops. But over time, you're able to understand what combo can do what and what you can accomplish with what light, um, what setting, what environment, or whatnot. And they have different uh, descriptions of what each film, each lens does, along with each uh, flash as well. But back to the hipster role, what that kind of does is there, there's quite a few people out there who kind of see, see hipstamatic as, uh, well, it upsets them that they're not able to control the image, they don't know how to use it, so they get frustrated and kind of put it down, when really, you don't have to do that, and that's what the hipster role is all about. It, it allows you to have some sort of direction to go with it, and there you're not alone with it because there's other people following your account, and they're tagging you using that post, and it's it's what makes it fun. So a lot of people are able to find other people who who share the same interest through the hipster role account, and kind of get back on with. And you can go back and see what different combos look like without even having to try it. Um, it lets what hip snack also is it's great. It, if you like a, com, a, 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 a combo, it lets you see what it was before, and you can actually save it as a fil as a favorite. So it tells you, okay, I use this particular lens, I use this flash, I use um, this film, and you can oh, that's it. Yeah, we're still tag where it's at and what kind of thing. And you can save it to you can either match the settings and say I want to, you, know, you like what it looks like and you want to take a picture of that same look. Or you can save it now and have a favorite setting. So, mm -hmm. so this gives you the different different favorites that are different combos, and I'll show you a couple examples. Of, so if you don't remember what they really look like, mm -hmm. you can see what the options are. Right? So black and white, so all kinds of filters. Big up as one of the favorites, but there's a lot of options. It's a favorite app of mine. Um, another part of the community that I like for Instagram, um, it uses an application called Decimate. When, this is a newer version of Decimate, but it, it first looked, you kind of picked out different filters, but you didn't know really how it was going to, what was going to happen. And now it kind of gives you a little example of what what will happen to a picture. You can take a picture within it, or you can actually upload a picture. So I'm going to upload this picture of vegetables from the garden. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at the different effects. There's, I think, like 15 or so. Um, and you can put them in different order. You can turn some on and off. You can change the order up and, and, and process it differently, or you can actually just hit random and it'll pick whatever for you. Or hit, and hit process and it looks at the image and it'll do funky stuff to it. You kind of never know what you're going to get. You just can keep, you can do multiple runs and see what happens. And so, as far as community, um, Decimate, there's, I don't really know who started it, but every Monday, you're asked if you want to participate. You can um, decimate um, end day, and it'll oh, wow. basically, yeah, it'll it, you pick <laughs> one of your pictures that you use in the last 16 pictures of your Instagram shots and um, repurpose that, reprocess that, and post it. And you can see quite a few different. Um, let me just see what it does next. Sometimes it goes quicker. I guess it depends on how many filters you have. And, <laughs> I think it also it depends on the size of the image. Like if you're trying yeah. to, yeah. to process a, a, a photo that's already been edited, and it's a large file, it won't it'll crash on every time. Mm. No, it doesn't crash. It doesn't crash. Some 
very, very artsy. You never really know what you're going to get. You do know what you're, you're going to get if you, if you use, it use it enough. Exactly. I was going to say, yeah, if you use it. I know what I'm going to get. If I use it habitually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it, and it, it just, you can see really interesting things on every Monday. You just, I mean, every day your people are going to post to it, but you can see on Monday especially, it's more active. So, so, no. and you so those are the, uh, maybe, I guess, three or so things I really, have, as far as using Instagram, using and, and tying community, finding others and finding other uh, photos you know, that, that kind of appeal to you. Um, another application I wanted to share, I wanted to show two more. And one, the first thing is, the one is Percolate. If you go to the tag, I guess you can find it, but not there's not a particular yeah. That's square ready, which is also fantastic if you go to our display. This has gone through multiple revisions as well, and it kind of ties it to like I guess it's like purpling and the and a when you creating coffee and right. different effects. So let me pull up a photo. Like grinding. <laughs> yeah, just the terms yeah. that he uses. Um, it's my son's seventh birthday, and he got a general grievance mask. This one. Grinding the beans, boiling the water. <laughs> See the coming with the dots. And there's different feature you can do grind, brew, sort of. Um, it, you, it's defaulted to, to, to grind it up like a fine, but I usually do extra fine, and you have to read it. Read it. And that's. If you trust your, your, your no, setting, you can just wait till the end. Yeah, I gotta see it. <laughs> Why don't you pick different color tones? Um, there's different, you know, there's circles, there's like kind of like solid circles, gel. You know, so it kind of ties a little bit of the picture itself to the, to the effects. There's one I never use, but it's it, the stars on the picture. It is kind of silly. But, um, and then each one of those you can then you can customize a little bit more as far as the colors, you know. Light and sweet. This is for kind of more of a play on coffee names and soy. And even then, when you see little arrows, you can get even more detail as far as your your edits. But it's not for everybody. It's it's very very artsy. I think I think it's you know it doesn't look like a photo, but it looks looks interesting. And I really had, I had a nice time playing with it, and combining that with like and maybe another another. Uh, same version of a photo, but like kind of mixing them together. So you can save it, share it with Twitter, of course. And the last one I wanted to show is anti crop. I don't know how to do this. Her, um, <coughs> her photo of the soccer player where her foot would have been cut off would probably have been a good example. Because you could actually bring it back. But if it's not there, you'll only grow what what is I think it would just elongate the leg, right? Where it yeah. was cut off essentially that it, it extends. So basically if you have a photo that's there's an edge if you want to kind of grow that extra edge. I and mean, you can do crazy different effects with it too. Grab the edge and let it grow to make it look. Change the resolution. Change the. Um, composition framing. Um, 
that's an interesting one. So see how we just kind of started to grow on the edge of the other picture? I mean, the other, so the no was kind of repeated. So if so, if you had like a foreground, you wanted to have it extra information, I guess. It's a word that Photoshop uses. It is. Photoshop has a cloning, cloning. kind of like a cloning. Yeah, yeah. cloning effects, and kind of you can pull it in different parts. It's kind of neat. I've seen. I've been able to like take do something like that and then save the picture up, upward again so you get a little more artsy. It's just it's a, it's an interesting thing that And then the one other thing I liked also again about want to mention about community and Instagram was um, Instagram HTX, which oh I don't talk about. Huh. Instagram HTX. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna say Well, I know it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a one we can talk about. Okay, well my name's Joey. I'm I'm the good old boy on Instagram. I'm the good old boy on everything Twitter and Facebook and <laughs> But, um, but Melda was actually the first person who told me about Camera Plus, and the first person who told me about Instagram, and like ever since then I was just thinking to myself, I have to think of like every day, like we just, <laughs> yeah. for the longest time we, uh, we were joking about like cheating on Instagram, you because were... she initially was sending out photos that were just, had these crazy edits, and I just, I didn't get how she was doing it, but anyway, so I, that, that's just a side story. Um, what what the Instagram HTX account is about? It's um, it's just a way of connecting people within the, the community within Houston. Um, you know, one of the things that I thought was so cool about Instagram is you're able to connect with people all around the world. And being as though I, I was checking out people's feeds from like Dallas, New York, San Francisco. They'd always have these photo walks, but I noticed that the photo walks um, happen more frequently in those towns. And I was like, what's up with that? I, I kind of want to hang out with, with these people some more. So I decided to, to start the, uh, the Instagram HTS account. And you know, one of the things we'd like to start doing is meeting on a monthly basis. Uh, we did that last month at Discovery Green in Houston. Um, another one would be having photo contests, um, uh, doing shout outs and it's going to build, but currently what we do have, um, is we have Wisdom Wednesdays, which kind of is more, it's not a tutorial as much as it is kind of like advice. It's like an advice column with the, with the account. Um, we've had some, we've had one that had to do with Hipstamatic, how to use the app, kind of get some tips. We've had one that just kind of allowed people to uh, discuss what their favorite apps were. We've had one that discussed uh, different ways to get your images printed up. And, you know, with the uh, with Facebook taking over, well, I guess buying out Instagram, uh, with the launch of the Android app, these are all things that I see would help a lot of Android users uh, kind of enjoy the app a lot more. It's, it's kind of the same feeling that, you know, we had when we first started out on Instagram. You know, the popular page might be broken, but there's there's still, and I say that because, you know, back in the day, everybody was, that was kind of like, another thing was to try to make the popular page. They were happy and they kind of just um, made everybody happy. But now it's, it, there's other techniques that you can use to get people involved that will allow them to, to see the benefit of Instagram. Um, we also have the My So Called Weekend Project. It's uh, it's kind of a theme. Uh, we've done tiny a tiny people theme. We did the black and white theme. Um, we did some of the others, but negative negative space. We did negative space, but it kind of just, it's it, it, it kind of gives them an idea of you know. You know, here, here's a theme to work with, go out and have fun. On Monday, we're going to go ahead and feature 16 of y'all's uh, y'all's images for everybody to see. So, you know, with the uh, with the amount of time that, that we've had with the with the, uh, the account and given how many people have started following, I think that people have kind of started uh, having fun. Well, I love it because it helps you find other people in Houston. It helps you see Houston in a different way, different perspectives. 
you know, finding more and more folks here in Houston. I mean, we did a couple of meetups that were really tied to Instagram itself. Instagram has probably done three or four um, that it, basically they pick a day and it's, you know, nation, you know, around the world. Mm -hmm. That's the one day you have to go, you know. So we've done a couple of meetups. Um, I like the fact that we can do a meetup as far as meetup and talk about apps and talk about photography, but then also the actual walk where you get your, right. you know, Houston's so hot though it's hard to do walks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we can do any indoor. <laughs> indoor, exactly. Right. Indoor. Julie and I went to the museum, but we almost got picked out because yeah, you're, you're not allowed to take pictures in there. Um, and then somebody go, you know, it's you know, cooler at night time, but then it's hard. Night photography season, if you want to go maybe with a group because mm -hmm. sometimes you should have to say this. But I love the community aspect of it, finding other folks and just giving, get, getting some suggestions, especially from Joey and some other folks that are very talented photographers and I'm kind of learning from that and seeing what else I can do. I think that's the value in the community is really learning from each other. I mean, you do make friends, like we've made friends, but I, like I said, I'm a technical dolt. And so, like, Joe, Joey's given me a lot of technical advice and even just somebody who's been on Instagram longer is more savvy or savvy in galleries are showing or has connections here you get you get to learn about all that by meeting the people in the real world and then having continual relationships with them in the digital world yeah. <laughs> like it's i think thing rebecca and i know how long we get we still continue to communicate yeah all the time yeah. but we don't see each other it, it, it's, it's kind of like that that's where you started out yeah now, so it's like non-Twitter people that are sharing on Instagram, now they have a, a different way to connect with people mm -hmm. they wouldn't have been able to connect with using social media, so it's really interesting. Did y'all have any interest, I just read here on an art gallery that's not paintings and photos, it's ceramics and sculpture and jewelry. Would y'all be very interested in if they open up a gallery for an evening and let y'all take pictures of everything you wanted and keep on? And it, it, it kind of transfers, you know, the sculpture to another medium, sure. you know, so, I mean, they might ask the artist ahead of time before they would let you do it, but I yeah. think most of the artists would be thrilled. Most galleries will thing. let you, but the MFA won't. Yeah, the CAM no. will. There are some places where you mm -hmm. can. You can at the, um, mm -hmm. at the Asia Society. You mm -hmm. can at some places, yeah. but at some you can't. And it, even within the MFA, there are galleries where you can. And where you can. Yeah. It's a it's a copyright issue with the yes. image. If you took a terrific picture of a piece of sculpture and you made a lot of money on it and the artist didn't get any income, they might resent it. I'm it's not, not sure likely it's to copyright, happen. Though. I'm not sure it's a copyright um, <laughs> issue, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. And I only say that because I have friends who most of my images are not my own, uh -huh. and so they. It has to do with who owns the art mm -hmm. and not whether the art is copyrighted or not. I mean, basically you can say all art is copyrighted, but if I take a picture of art, it now belongs to me. I agree. That image is mine. It, it isn't that art, it's a picture of that art. Mm -hmm. So. Copyright within art is a very tricky business, so it's well, not we don't want to piss anybody off. Sure. <laughs> we don't want to. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. not like we're going to make a million dollars from selling, <laughs> and they're not making a million dollars either. Mm -hmm. And actually, Instagram, actually Facebook owns the copyright to my image. Mm -hmm. They can they can do whatever yeah, they want. That's absolutely it. true. It's true. So, and, and most of the artists prefer publicity anyway. You know, long in the long term, everything's better for them. So really, what it is at least within the museum, is who owns that piece of art. Yeah, yeah. well, if, if mm -hmm. they say yes to it, it you know, it, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm I mean, if it's... I was thinking you're thinking about getting out of the heat, and... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's, it's a more interesting... And I think some art galleries, I mean, once you snap two or three images you like, it's that's not much else to it, but at a sculpture gallery, I think there's a little bit more... And a place to meet where there's other art, or even mm -hmm. if those artists wanted to come out and... Mm -hmm. Yes, that no, that actually would appeal to the dealer a great deal. She would announce, "We're going to open this up. You know, this is the date we're thinking about. Give me your response if you do want to be here. You know, that kind of thing. That way, if anybody yeah, was the, sensitive, they could say, please don't include myself.' Or, hey, how about let me see what you take of my sculpture? <laughs> I'd love to see it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, what I was gonna say is that uh, you know the first the first meetup for Instagram HTX was at Discovery Green. It wasn't the first meetup for the Instagram community here in Houston, mm -hmm. but kind of more as an organized group. That was the first one, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean we'd like to to kind of go to different places. I I told the group you know sometimes it'd be outdoors, sometimes it'd be indoors, sometimes it might not be family friendly, sometimes. So it just depends on that month, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's an excellent idea. We're just doing some on a regular basis. They're open to, to, to mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Do you have more plans? Yeah, well, I was trying to do one on a monthly basis. This month kind of flew by, so. Yeah. I still want to see the olive clip. Yes, you know. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I've tried three or four different different lenses as far as um, for, for iPhones, and this has been my favorite. It's, it's called the olive clip. And it's um, it gives you three different lenses for your iPhone 4S. The the one problem I have is that you have to take the case off. But other than that, there we go. Um, am I switching? Let's see if you turn it back on. Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, so it gives you a fisheye lens. It gives you a macro, and it gives you a wide angle. And I love wide angle photography. I love on my DSLR. My favorite lens is a 10 to 17. Which is kind of funny. I haven't used my DSLR in ages. It feels so bad. <laughs> but you can kind of see the look of the the, mm -hmm. the gives you, that's without it. So it gets, so you see Rhonda. And let me get Rhonda with a little bit more more information around it. Yeah. There's a little bit of flare on that. Um, if you use the fish eye, you really get some, oh, yeah. some bubbling yeah. effect. Um, and then I also love 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 macro. You take off the white angle, you screw that piece off, and then you get the macro. I've got a couple of examples. Super, super. Cool. You get like just really, really right up. Wow. Just for, for photos, for bugs, anything nature, and you get really, really cool shots. So yeah, it's 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 seventy five bucks, but I think it's absolutely worth it. I've gotten some fantastic photos out of it. Really, 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 really recommend. You have the app store. You can. I mean, I, I, Apple Store, you can just order it. I got mine at Prize. Yeah. Huh. This is the second one. I lost one. I panicked and had to buy one the very day that I realized I lost it. And I found this kind of original. Yeah, I tried the, the photo Jeju lens, um, the wide angle. It was, it was, I had photos, I think. It had the magnetic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The thing about those is like you have a, a, a magnetic. Uh, we have a little yeah, circle, a little metal circle that you have. You can piece it on the back, you put it to your, yeah, your iPhone. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And then there's a magnet on the mm -hmm. on the lens itself. You plug, you put it on, and it sticks. But after a while, you run out of those adhesive strips, mm -hmm. and this is it's this one way just sits right on top, and it's just it's very sturdy. It's I lost one of the macro pieces, and I emailed the guy, or actually sent him a Twitter message, and he sent me a new piece. You know, it's really cool. Days, you see it? It's, it's real cool. Um, I'm going to have to um, move, um, <laughs> move on to my next meeting. Um, how do you want, if, I, if the Gulf Shore guy is interested, how do you want me to get a contact? I'll give you a question. Can I grab it real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. I just have a couple of them, because I did a couple last month. I play around with that macro a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna refresh it right quick. Just to make sure. One thing I was wanting was looking at this year. Um, your Gorilla Pod plus Glyph. Well, I have the Gorilla Pod. I've never had the. Yeah, I was wondering what. what and it's got the. Uh, okay, let me relaunch this here. I would love to buy something like this. So that's actually a two-part thing on top here. To where originally I just had this, the Glyph, and this is the Glyph Plus okay. add on to where it secures the iPhone a little more because um, I was putting this next to my kids actually and I realized I could just hit it and it would fall out. But if you clip this on top, you see it basically you, secures did you order the iPhone. This online? Yeah, from Amazon. Okay. Both so I was looking, I went back to the Apple store to look to get another olive clip. I wanted something like this and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I couldn't remember the name of it. Yep. Okay. Studio Neat is the company that does it. Um, you can buy the two pieces together, I think, for like 20 bucks now. Yeah, you have to take it out of the case, though. There's a couple that I took. Oh, my, my macro. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's, 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 been, I mean, it's my favorite thing ever. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah. 
I love nature photography. So, so before you secure, you just got to kind of move that back, put it in here. Okay. Yeah. This is kind of, kind of yeah, a rubbery where it looks. Yeah, it's a really good fit on it. There it is. This is the magnetic one, too, so you can stick the little feet up against um, steel and just kind of put it anywhere. It holds pretty what well. Is, um, what's this one? The glyph. Ah, uh, the glyph, like, total the two pieces are like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's very affordable. Exactly. For some time lapse photography yeah. as well. Um, I'll, actually, I'll show you a video right quick that I took with that. Um, let's see. Two. So this was with the, um, the iPhone and the Glyph over the course of about two hours. You can see the clock there as well, and I had to keep replacing pacifiers. Obviously one was sleeping and one was not. So that went on for, like I said, about two hours while I had the uh, thing set up. Um, any other questions for the speakers? I know it's kind of free flowing and open, but anybody? Cinegram? Yeah, yeah it's just it, whenever you have to give a reminder of that, it's just like you take a photo and you open up the app and you hit a spot that was moving and it turns it into a video. And it's, 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 it's Yeah, it, it formed, like you, you have the photo, you open up the app like Instagram, and then you highlight the area that you want to, to animate, and you add a filter and it becomes a little. And you post it, and people like it, and you follow it. It's kind of like this one, but it's good. So, oh. is, it, is it by the same? Is it open? I don't think it is. Joey, I don't understand. Instagram, <laughs> and then you highlight the area that you want to animate, and yet it's like, don't you hate her? I hate her. I shut her down. That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, so I'll give a plug. Uh, if you're not on the Facebook group, please join and post some of these apps that you guys are testing out. I'll try to get a rundown from each of you, the ones you showed off today, uh, and post them on there so everyone who uh, couldn't make it can see what you guys are using. Uh, and if there are others that anyone else are using that are kind of cool, I've got a few others that I'll post on there as well uh, from a photography standpoint. Um, and then to wrap up, the, uh, the next one we're going to have June 27th here. So the last Wednesday of every month is when we're going to do this. I'll post this on the Facebook group as well. Haven't locked down the theme just yet, but it'll be something uh, that hopefully will be interesting to, to others. So um, thanks for coming out. Hope you guys had a good time, learned something. Uh, I think it's kind of cool we had someone from the building just hop in because we had signs up here. So that's uh, kind of serendipitous. Very cool. So uh, feel free to stick around, have some wine. Uh, I think we've got some beer in the fridge as well. Uh, and hopefully we can do this again next month. No, um, no, the group. No, no, no. Absolutely. Um, like you cover a different topic or just yeah, apps in general? It's all local? Good question. Um, I don't know if you recall from like the 80s and 90s like user groups. So there was like a Mac user group, a Windows user group, cast a very wide net, essentially just software enthusiasts. So you would get together, talk about uh, different software things you were using. That's kind of broad, right? So I thought if we could make it a bit more focused each month, we'll get a different group of people in each time, but there'll be that core group of people. Here? 
we're doing it here. Uh, this is the first one, so we've only done it now. Next month it'll be here. The uh, month after that, there's a new co-working space start uh, that we may move it to. Uh, it's near the Dynamo Stadium on the west side of town, or I guess east side of town. So uh, we'll maybe move it around to other places, just kind of see where uh, who shows interest in it. But. So it's just like you talk about whatever apps. Would it be a theme every time? Like would it be photo or... Networking or yeah, some of the other ones that we have on the dock is music creation apps. So see what people are using on iOS and Android to, you know, actually on mobile to create music. Uh, journalism, see what different journalists in the communities are using in their professional lives. Uh, product, what's that? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I've already reached out to him to plant the seed to see if he would like to do it. Um, entrepreneurship, uh, teaching, nonprofits, you know, see what different uh, different interest group pockets around the uh, the city are using. So. Uh, if you have recommendations, definitely open to it. So. I don't. I mean, I, I really, <laughs> I use it like, like it's an art studio, and that's yeah. what it is. And I sometimes talk and text on it, but I don't know any, but I am interested. Like, I know it, it has the power to do a lot more things. Right. And that's kind of the idea, you know, get people from diverse segments out here and learn from others that are experts in that field. So. I guess learning, you know, people using apps as far as, and also people that are developing apps. Yeah, I mean, there's there are a lot of developer centric meetups around town, and some people get scared by that, okay, right? And we'll tie the two together. Right? That would be fantastic. Okay, yeah. well, here's some of the things that we like a lot. Yeah, don't they want to know what people? That's the cross pollination that I'm hoping happens eventually. So, yeah, that's uh, the long term goal. Yeah. We'll do it. Others will do it around the community. There's some game developers here locally as well. Uh, Nathan Ayer is a guy who I want to come sh uh, at some point and show off what he's using. So, yeah, he's super sharp. So, oh, this is fun. Thank you, guys, both for uh, coming out and speaking.